son borrowed my car. He lives in another state, graduated from college at 21. They didn't think he was going to go to college. Tried to keep him out of the advanced placement and honors classes. I fought like hell for him. Got him into classes. He got into the college that he wanted to. Graduated from that college. Moved to another state. Got a great job. Went to buy his house at 23 and three quarters. And they wanted to know if he was a football player, a rapper. And because he didn't have a black name. And he had excellent credit. First thing that happened. He comes back into Pennsylvania and he borrows my car for Thanksgiving and drives to New Jersey. The cop stops him. Why'd you stop me? Oh, the license plate thing is illegal. He's like, my mother's been driving this car for several years. I don't understand. They take my son out the car, frisked and searched him, and gave him tickets for like, well, you know, something was hanging from the rear view mirror, like seven or eight tickets. I had the wherewithal, A, I had the gumption, and B, I had the money. And I got a civil rights lawyer, took them to court, and made them drop every last one of those charges. But here's what happened when we got to court. Judge looked at him and said, you can't possibly be 26 and have no criminal record. You're a black boy. Mm -hmm. He said that, openly in court. And on top of that, he also said, if you are an immigrant, even if you are here documented, and you get a traffic ticket and you are found guilty, we're going to deport you, according to the new laws that we have going on here. So when we sit on these panels and we're having discussions about what the marginalization of black and brown people look like, we can give you all the data in the world, but those stories make all the difference. And so I am constantly 